In this episode, we're going to be covering the common service topic. And this one's real personal to me because when we had our engine, we were we had this, it was supposed to be the state of the art engine, okay? And it run great, but most of the time it fall on its face and is inconsistent. The manifold pressure would really start bouncing, okay? When it was in a hard pull, it'd be bouncing. It wouldn't pull up as high. It just it seemed to be laboring to do the same job that it was doing earlier. And so we kept going in the shop, telling them what I was doing. They'd, if they'd do so, they're hocus pocus, and then they'd send us out. Then we go back in and do, you know do the same thing. And we, I said, fine. What are you doing in the back? Well, we're replacing lines, and are tightening up fittings, and are getting rid of 90 degree fittings, which causes restriction. Okay. Well, why? Well, we're looking. You know, we're looking for air. Well. If you take your suction side filter and you spin it off, it's never full to the top. Well, it's, it's very seldom full. There's a couple reasons why it will be. That tells me that we always have air, okay? Oh, they just said, you know what? That's what we live with, okay? That's the way it's supposed to be. But when it's killing our downtime, our production to make, you know, being able to produce money, yes, in this capitalistic world, that we called Cummins. And a guy by the name of Harold Webb gave me this common service topic from 1965 and yes it applies to today and I'll show you why it talks about and I broke it down into this shorter version and it talks about why the fuel filter is not full when you remove it ie that's what we were saying okay and there's a portion here that I have outlined it says the source of the vapor is the fuel itself like water, fuel contains a certain amount of dissolved air depending upon the fuel temperature, pressure on the fuel, wait, if we go back to the Caterpillar, it's just slightly different, and, you know, in atmospheric pressure, remember we're talking about going from sea level of 14.7 psi to the highest point on I-70 is 11,158 feet, which is around 10 psi, that's substantial loss in pressure pushing down on the fuel specific gravity and the amount of aeration which the fuel has been subjected to and i thought this was very interesting and then i'm going to describe this next if you want to read this whole thing i don't want to bore you okay i'm going to describe to you what's actually going on whenever you take the filter off and you put it on and it's, you fill it up you have a pretty good source of fuel okay going to the engine you know what i'm going to show you all right, let's go outside. You have a flashlight? I sure do. Come here for a minute, would you? I like catching Josh off guard. I like catching everyone off guard. We're gonna go over this fuel tank, this common service topic. Yep. Yeah. And bring it to life. Sounds good. You wanna help me? Absolutely. All right. I was hoping you'd say yes. <laughs> I brought the Caterpillar article, you know, and um, we went through that. Now we're in the Cummins article, and I thought, you know what? Perfect time to show the display here. Okay. So this explains exactly how the air is collected in the filter, how it passes through, and why you have the different variables, okay, of the filter, and, you know, the between taking off first thing with a full filter versus, you know, the filter with collect, that is collected air. Josh, let's go over the common service topic. Let's hit, hit on each point um, that adds air to that 10% that Caterpillar talks about. Okay. Okay. So our first line here. Okay. The source of the vapor is the fuel itself. Like water, fuel contains a certain amount of dissolved air, okay. depending on the fuel temperature. Okay, now here's what's going on. Cold fuel will hold more entrained air from sloshing, but it'll produce less vapor under a vacuum. Okay, i.e. where hot fuel will hold less entrained air from sloshing, or the return fuel, and right. it's agitating it too. Remember, you don't have that in a test cell. They have a separate su supply tank, so they, you don't contaminate the supply tank, okay? Right. Now, 
Hot fuel though will produce more of a vapor under a vacuum, i.e., let's go back to this real quick. This is, you know, let me speed the pump up, okay? Because the lower the flow, the less vapor you're gonna produce. But you speed the pump up and you put it under a vacuum, you produce vapor. That's why you lose performance, i.e. fuel starvation. So a dirty filter is kind of like hot fuel. It does the same thing. It creates restriction, but it creates vapor. Okay, and that's what I'm doing right here. Now, I'm not measuring it. I just want your eyes to be able to see what we're discussing. Okay? Okay, so that's what's going on with hot fuel versus cold fuel. The next one. Okay, the next is pressure on the fuel. Can you explain what they mean by pressure on the fuel? Yes. Again, what we're talking about, let's talk about atmospheric uh, uh, sea level. We have 14.7 PSI pushing down on your fuel, okay? As you go up in altitude, you lose that atmospheric pressure pushing down on your fuel, so you're having to increase vacuum. Huh. Hot fuel and altitude kind of have the same, uh, same uh, detrimental effects as that of a dirty restricting filter. So at sea level, we have 14.7 PSI pushing down on this fuel to bring it up, okay? Remember that we always have a vacuum up here on a conventional fuel filter right. system, except for in the Tesla. If we go up to Eisenhower Pass, I believe that's around 11,000 feet. And the highest point on I-70 west of Denver is 11,158 feet, all right? So at 10,000 feet, I looked it up, it's 10.1 PSI of pressure pushing down on the fuel. So how do we get that fuel up when we lose pressure? We, it, the pump has more restriction sucking it up, so it draws it through. So, i.e., we go back down to the same experience right here. In here, cavitating. Altitude and hot fuel have the same effect on fuel as a restricting filter. Now, remember, when we went from 14.7 PSI to 10.1, we lost 30% of the atmospheric pressure. What's our next one? Okay, so on top of that, now we're adding the aeration on which the fuel has been subjected to. That's the big one, because when we were going to the shops, we go check in, truck would sit, five times it'd be off, then they pull it into the shop, they put their sight glass on, and it only takes about three to five minutes for that air to rise up, and the bulk of the air to rise out of fuel. Right. And you've seen that. Absolutely. You've been, okay, you've seen that in the water tests and things like that. So, that's where the majority of your air comes from. When you're going down the road, and you can see, you can start to see the foam develop, but I've had this on low, and we'll come back to this when it's really agitated. Remember, we're not sloshing it. We had a test done a long time ago by University of Illinois. And what at that time, that's where they discovered most of the air came from was from the sloshing. You don't have sloshing on a dyno, unless you have Mario's truck pumping 2,100 gallons an no hour. No kidding in a small tank, yeah. and there's variables to this, but remember what they discovered is after it, the truck was traveling down the road for an hour and a half, the fuel would reach its saturation point. What do I mean by that? It would not hold any more air, but they related that amount of air that was in the fuel to that of a fuel filter with 11 and a half inches restriction. Because when you have that kind of restriction, you, 11 and a half is a ton of vapor, there's a ton of vapor being produced, okay? So that vapor being produced from 11 and a half inches of restriction is the same as the amount of air in the fuel from an hour and a half of agitation. Now, please remember there's variables to that. You know, it depends if you're in the Pennsylvania Turnpike versus a ten, uh, good Tennessee road, okay? So have we covered the points? We have, but now there is, when the equilibrium point is reached, any further air vapor or air released from the fuel or brought in with fuel through an air leak passes through the paper immediately at the extreme top. And that's what I was explaining. When that fuel level is, when that fuel is, well, we will not drop anymore. Any more air that comes in goes to the extreme top, right to your engine, and that's when you're idling and you feel that miss. Okay? And that's also what's going to lead us into one of the next episodes when we're talking about timing. And we're going to tell you how much it does delay your timing. Now, remember, this is inconsistent as everything because air is not consistent. Right. It's kind of like taking an old gas engine with a distributor and move that distributor around. It'll change how that engine runs. Now, leave that distributor run loose and let it drive down the road. 
and it'll be all over the place, okay? Then when you retard that distributor, horsepower goes down, fuel mileage goes down, temperatures go up. Same effect that air does to our diesel engines, which we'll get into later. Let's cover the next episode.